I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Life is Strange. It was released back in 2015 and interested a lot of people with its unique storytelling and interesting characters. We later saw some sequels and even a prequel. Then in 2022, Square Enix released a remaster of the first Life is Strange game alongside a remaster of Before the Storm. And even though Life is Strange released 8 years ago, I wanted to talk about it and see if it's a good game in the present. So let's take a look at Life is Strange. Life is Strange is a story-focused game, so I'll talk about it more than I usually do. The main plot focuses on the main character, Max Caulfield, and her friend, Chloe Price, as they try to find out what happened to a fellow student who disappeared. Before the investigation, Max saw Chloe get shot in the bathroom by a kid named Nathan, but was able to rewind time to save her. I'll talk about this more later, but Max's rewind powers are important to the gameplay and the story. So while the main plot sounds simple, this game takes you on an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. Similar to Telltale's The Walking Dead, this game is all about letting you make your own choices that affect the story and the characters. And thankfully, the game doesn't fall flat with that. Small decisions you make or dialogue options you pick will be important later on. They can change your relationship with other characters, which makes the game feel so real. I felt guilty whenever I disappointed a character or made them mad. For a game from 2015, it's impressive they're able to pull that off. There were plenty of events in the game that made me concerned for the characters as well. Like when Kate was about to jump off the roof of the dorms to self-delete herself. When I first played, I reset my game at least five times to make sure Kate stayed alive. Even before then, I went out of my way to be nice to Kate since she got bullied a lot in this game. Once again, it's amazing that a game can make me feel these kinds of emotions for a character. But what shocked me even more was the ending of Chapter 3. Along with her rewind powers, Max can also go back in time by looking at older photos. So Max goes back in time and changes one event in Chloe's life to hopefully make her happier. But when we return to the present and visit Chloe, we see her wheelchair-bound and dependent on multiple kinds of medical equipment. This part in particular really made my heart crumble. It was just such a shock to see Chloe like this. And while that part may be sad and unfortunate, it doesn't come close to the depravity and insanity of Chapter 5. After following some clues, Max finds an underground bunker beneath a farm. This is where they find out Chloe's missing friend was actually kidnapped and killed. And since Max finds one of Nathan's jackets in the basement, they think he has something to do with this. But just you wait, it gets so much worse. After being unable to find Nathan, Max and Chloe return to the barn. After their arrival, Chloe gets shot and killed and Max gets kidnapped into the creepy basement. And then we learn the true culprit behind this was Max's photography teacher, Mr. Jefferson. When I got to this part of the game, my brain just exploded. So it turns out Mr. Jefferson has this weird obsession with capturing people's distraught emotions, and kidnapping them is the only way to get genuine photos. And the only reason Nathan was helping was because Mr. Jefferson offered the mentorship and appreciation that Nathan always wanted. What a duo of mentally ill psychopaths. So, after manipulating time and space some more, we return to Arcadia Bay with Chloe as a giant storm is about to destroy the town. Max had seen a storm just like this at the beginning of the game, but it was only in a dream, but now she knows that the storm is real. The storm is never actually explained, but Max believes that all of her time rewinding led to the storm that's about to wipe out Arcadia Bay. Chloe then offers Max a photo before she died so Max can go back in time to prevent the storm. The player is then left with two choices, rewind time once more and let events happen as they were supposed to, or let the town get destroyed and run away with Chloe. This is going to sound dark, but in my opinion, ending 1 seems to be the most satisfying. Instead of sacrificing the lives of everyone in Arcadia Bay, you sacrifice your best friend to stop the storm. And while this may be more narratively satisfying, it kind of isn't from a gameplay perspective. After building up or breaking down all those friendships, all those tough decisions you had to make, they all just get wiped away, like they never even happened. Which is pretty unrewarding. After everything you've been through, it gets erased, just like that. Then on the other hand, it's really dark just to leave everyone to die in the storm and escape with Chloe. Sure, she's safe, but what about all the friends and people you've met and helped? 
they're all gone, and honestly, that's just extremely depressing. Both endings are kind of poetic in a sense. Sometimes in life, you don't win. Even after you tried your hardest, you still end up losing something you hold close. I think that's something we can all relate to, and something the story tries to remind us of. Of course, I could just be reading into something that's not even there, but that's just what I thought about it. So, after experiencing the story, I have to say, it was pretty amazing. All the plot twists and surprises were kind of refreshing to see. This game's story really surprised me and threw me for a loop, and I won't lie, I liked it. It felt nice being astonished and shocked so many times in one story. I just really enjoyed it and all the elements of it. The writing team did a great job, and I really did love the story. This will be a pretty short section, but let's talk about the gameplay next. Unique to Life is Strange is the Rewind feature, which allows you to rewind time to pick different options and to solve puzzles. And a lot of the time, it's a cool thing to mess around with. But one thing that got annoying was when Max would talk about how she could have done something differently. The game really insists you should go back and do something differently every time you make a choice. And let's say you comply and actually do rewind time to change what you did. Max will still talk about how she could have done something differently. Of course, this doesn't do anything gameplay-wise since you can always reverse and pick what you want, but it made me paranoid at times. Like the decision I made would somehow mess something up. I know elements of the story play out differently depending on what you do, but it got unnerving and kind of annoying whenever I did anything and the game would try to get me to change my mind. I think the game does this to let you know you can explore other options, but it still made me anxious sometimes. Other than that one complaint, everything else is done very well. Sometimes it's fun to pick the rude dialogue options and see what happens. You can always reverse back and pick something else, so why not have fun with it? You also have optional photos to take as you explore the world. They're not super difficult to find, but rewarding to fully complete. Speaking of the world, I love the atmosphere of this game. Whenever the sun is setting, it gives off this beautiful orange color, and the sunny days really show the great colors this game has to offer. The world looks even better if you play the remastered version. The enhanced lighting and shadows make this game look extraordinary. This game has plenty of visual charm, and I really do appreciate that a lot. I also liked how the pause screen was themed like a sketchbook. It gave personality to something so simple, and I really enjoyed it. All the little drawings and cutouts were pretty cool to see. And you know I'm gonna talk about the soundtrack. It's full of wonderful music, especially the title screen. I love how calm and peaceful it is. When I was in high school, sometimes I would open the game and let the title screen music play while I studied. The game is full of peaceful music, the OST puts me at peace, and I love it for that. I really enjoyed my playthrough of Life is Strange. I loved the characters, the setting, the atmosphere, and the music. It was all done so well and uniquely. A lot of other people love this game too, and it's easy to see why. All the charm and visuals this game has is something I've hardly seen done anywhere else. If you haven't played this game before, you really are missing out on something great. I adore this game, and I have for a while, and hopefully you all love it just as much as me.